there for 10 years. And also we done a lot of the open data and uh, open government activity too. So we are personally very interested about you and what you've been doing for years. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really great to meet you. Um, yes, the same. Um, yeah. So I, I've always been a, a creative commoner as well. Uh, I participated in the first translations of the Creative Commons and mm -hmm. ever since the introduction of Creative Commons Zero, that is yeah, the public yeah. domain universal, I've mm -hmm. been adopting yeah. it for all my software work. So thank you for, for uh, working for <laughs> the Commons as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, before we start the interview, I will briefly introduce the, the purpose of the DC research. The DC research is uh, actually conducted by the Ministry of Gender Equality and Family in Korea uh, for the future, for the building of future policy. So part of that, the Jennifer, she is uh, doing re uh, she is research about the, how the IT technology can help to the democracy uh, move to the next level. How do we can gather the others' opinions and how can we, we can use them to the when we uh, make a deci policy decision and how can we use them to the policy changes. So as there's the brief introduction about that. And yeah, like uh, the questionnaire that I sent you to, to this morning, mm -hmm. will just follow the questionnaire. Is it okay, okay. to you? Sure, yeah. of course. Yeah. yeah. So for first, what is your key role as this minister? Because that is quite a new concept to us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So um, actually, this is a new post in Taiwan as well. I'm the first yeah. digital minister. Uh, and my job description is on my Twitter. Uh, and so mm -hmm. you can easily see that job description. Yeah. Um, and so you probably have already seen that. So mm -hmm. I will not read it aloud again. It is a form of a prayer. Yeah. OK, so um, a digital minister's work is actually uh, to coordinate across all ministries toward mm -hmm. digital transformation. So mm -hmm. I don't have a ministry. My mm -hmm. office is one person dispatched from mm -hmm. each ministry. So at okay. most, I can have 32 uh, colleagues. At the moment, I have 22. Uh, mm -hmm. But in each team, uh, also in each ministry, also uh. has a team, what we call the participation officers or POs uh, in charge of the digital transformation around public participation. Mm -hmm. And so there is a core network of people who sent people to my office and also a periphery network in each mm -hmm. of uh, 100 people now um, working toward uh, you know, digital transformation. And so this is uh, a role that is mostly coordinating the various mm -hmm. different values, like between mm -hmm. economic development and environmental mm -hmm. sustainability, between scientific innovation and equality and inclusion. These are sometimes seen as competing values. And my work is just to find out the digital ways to make common values out of different positions. That is okay. my main work. Mm -hmm. okay. So that means that you must be really, really busy because you have to meet a lot of people and also yeah. you have to arrange and also you have to like recommend the, the best, uh, like a best solution they can use. Yes. So would you briefly introduce your daily routine as your mm -hmm. as yeah. the minister? Well, it's the it's a different routine every day of the week. So okay. every Wednesday, like today, mm -hmm. I meet strangers that I've never met before. Yeah. This is my office hour. And mm -hmm. sometimes there's a delay, so sorry about that. No, it's but, okay. <laughs> but but um, before 2 uh, p.m., anyone can step into my office and talk to mm -hmm. me. So there's a queue, right? And, and also, uh, my only ask is that our conversation to be published under Creative Commons. Yeah. And then after 2 p.m., that is the pre-booked time. So oh. they're guaranteed to have 40 minutes of my time mm -hmm. at a time, but they have to book maybe weeks in advance. Mm -hmm. So combined with those two, it could be through teleconference, it could be just visiting. I get to understand the latest social innovations and to find them the correct partners in the different ministries to, to help them in their social cause. So Wednesday is with the advocacy groups. And every Thursday is the cabinet meeting where I bring those ideas to the cabinet meeting 
and on the uh, Thursday afternoon, there's a board of science and technology meeting where we collectively decide how to spend our, for example, budget toward developing 5G network, how to um, do AI research and things like that. And because it is a place where all the scientific and technology uh, budget is made by each ministries, we have to harmonize their proposals. Mm -hmm so that they have to maximize synergy toward the common global goals rather than each ministry working its own silo. Uh, so in, in that role, I help the uh, Ministry um, of Science and Technology, but also our uh, horizontal minister in charge of Board of Science and Technology in helping them to bring social innovation. I just learned from Wednesday to the mm -hmm. Thursday meetings and the cabinet meeting. And on Fridays, uh, we meet with people who raise petitions Anyone who get five thousand. I'm sorry, the con the sound uh, is a little bit disconnected. It, it's a little bit disconnecting. Is yeah. it okay now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, every Friday, ev anyone who get five thousand signatures in an online platform uh -huh. called a joint platform can uh -huh. call a meeting by uh -huh. the voting of the participation officer network. So mm -hmm. every Friday, every other Friday or so, we also meet here in the Social Innovation Lab or in different ministry to talk about issues that are raised by e-petitions. So it could be about, you know, banning plastic straws gradually to replace them with things that does not cause uh, a sea plastic waste, all the yeah. way to how to make the uh, mountain climbing uh, more informed using the latest GPS technology or it could be about how to build a hospital mm -hmm. in a remote area of Taiwan uh, mm -hmm. so that their, their ambulance travel time can be shortened. So there's no limit to those mm -hmm. uh, e-petition, um, you know, other than diplomatic and defense. Uh, but other than that, everything can be raised and be deliberated on a Friday. And then on Saturday, I usually go around and giving talks, public speeches attend the Oslo Freedom Forum or things like that. And on Sunday, I spend time with my family. And on Monday, uh, on Monday uh, is special because it's our team meeting. Our team have lunch together and each one brief about the work they have done in the previous week, as well mm -hmm. as the things they plan to do the next week. But the thing is that because I give no orders and I take no orders, all the people who join my office get to decide their own work. So Monday is our time to find collaborators within our office. It's a very agile fashion of developing project mm -hmm. using standard Kanban, Rocket Chat, you know, the, the usual digital tools. And finally, on Tuesdays, I tour around Taiwan. So sometimes I just uh, travel to a remote rural indigenous area at the evening of Monday or even the afternoon of Monday mm -hmm. and I spend the whole day there and talk mm -hmm. to their local co-ops, local elders, local entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs mm -hmm. about regional revitalization. But mm -hmm. when I talk to them publicly, we also mm -hmm. connect back to the municipalities where all the 12 ministries are also online so mm -hmm. that they can see through me the true life story of the local issues instead of seeing them as very abstract things. And that complements our Wednesday office hour because those people mm -hmm. are the ones that will have to pay the most time uh, expense to travel to Taipei to meet me. So on, on Tuesday, I meet them in their local place. And on Wednesday, I meet people in Taipei. Wow, that's quite <laughs> amazing one week. <laughs> How about Wednesday? Is there usually a full book? So Your yeah, the, the Wednesday, the, the pre-book time, uh, I think is usually booked to maybe two. Okay. In the uh, but the walk-in uh, is any time, right? So you can find me very easily, actually. All right. It sounds like you're a mediator with using the IT tech, IT magic mm -hmm. things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, 그럼 현재 혹시 궁금한 거 있으세요? Oh, so 그 32명, 32명이 네. 어, 각 부, 부처에서 온다고 했는데 어떤 선발 기준이 있나 네. 아니면 그들이 뭐 IT 프렌들리 한다든가 뭐 그런 네. 게좀 궁금해요. Yeah, uh, Jennifer wants to know that there, as you said, there is a 32 colleague from the different minister. Yeah, is there any standard how uh, they, I mean, standard to uh, collect, not collect, how can they, um, what can you guys say? Higher, higher. I mean, is there any standard when they, when the 32 colleagues, uh, 
<laughs> okay. Oh, How, yeah, like, yeah. What, what, what's my HR policy, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, um, and we're talking about the core team, right? Not the PO network. Uh -huh. The PO network has its own regulation, which mm -hmm. I just uh, shared to you. It's a national regulation. It applies to all ministries. But you're probably asking uh, who are the people that are I hire directly yeah. to work with me on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. Okay, so um, there's two HR criteria. Mm -hmm. First, they must bring in a new perspective, a new value, a new experience that no other existing team members have. Mm -hmm. That is to say, they must be complementary uh -huh. to the existing team. Mm -hmm. That's the first one. Mm -hmm. So the Ministry of Culture will bring a cultural perspective. Mm -hmm. The Ministry of Communication will bring a communication perspective and so on. Mm -hmm. So uh, each ministry can send at most one person. That's mm -hmm. the reason, because mm -hmm. otherwise they're just going to reinforce each other. We mm -hmm. want a plurality, a diversity, not a over determination by any particular value. So first they must be complementary. Mm -hmm. And second, they must be willing to give at least as much as they take. Because when they come to my office, they still report to their minister. They don't report to me. They, they do their own scorecards. I don't rank, I don't rate them. I, I don't do any management. We just ask them to work out aloud, meaning mm -hmm. let everybody know what they're working on. That's my only ask. So because of that, they must be willing to help or other ministries' values, uh, as much as they want other ministry to help their values. So that's the only two hiring mm -hmm. criteria. So that means that the 32 colleagues, they volunteer for this job or oh, they, they volunteer? Yeah, they're, they're volunteer, but they're career public servants. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. they, they, okay. are, they are senior career public servants with anywhere from 10 years to 30 years of uh -huh. public sector okay. experience who uh -huh. volunteer to my office. So oh. what they, they learn, they bring mm -hmm. back to their ministry. And oh. they're almost like sometimes almost director general level or already director general level uh, mm -hmm. when they come to my office. And they mm -hmm. may be promoted to section chief right after coming back to their ministry. So mm -hmm. each ministry can send someone to train for six months or one year, get mm -hmm. them back to be the mm -hmm. deputy chief or the section chief and send another more junior one to my office. Oh, yeah, that's quite interesting. Because yeah. some some part, it could be easily to send them like a junior or some, some like a less than five years career. They can be assigned at that kind of position, but that means they actually the government take it seriously. Okay. Yes, and, and I will also add that everybody who returned uh, from their post to my office, mm -hmm. back to their ministry, have mm -hmm. been promoted. So, <laughs> so that is also a powerful incentive. Uh, yeah, okay. uh, yeah. I totally understand. Six months to one year? one year? Well, it depends on their minister, right? If their minister feel that they want someone to go back to contribute, mm -hmm. uh, usually I think that the shortest is half a year. But mm -hmm. uh, some like the uh, communication uh, ministry, the National Communication Commission, uh, delegate uh, Councillor Yening uh, was here uh, from the very beginning. So he's been around with us for three years now oh. and, and sh shows no signs of coming back. But he mm -hmm. maintained very close connection with the NCC because he was the director general of law in the mm -hmm. NCC. Mm -hmm. So he has very good connection to other DGs in that ministry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. How long has a PBIS been run? So three, three years. I, three I just years. I just said that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then all the members that, as you, mem as you mentioned, that they are from the, the other ministry, 32 colleagues. So um, there are some exceptions. Yeah. Um, so um, in Taiwan, we have something called the Institute of Information Industry or IIII. Mm -hmm. It is like the 18F in the US. That's the closest 
uh, resemblance. So it's a kind of not-for-profit institute, mm -hmm. but it also worked very closely with uh, the um, IT-related uh, policy making. So it's at like it's like a think tank, but a think tank is actually a joint venture from the IT sector, the social sector, the academia, and uh, the public. And so uh, they also send people to my office, but those people are more like contractors. Mm -hmm. They work on a specific skill. For example, our filmmaking uh, is delegated to one triple I person. Our um, back end management, our cyber, uh, cyber security product management is to a specialist. So there's also a few of the specialists, maybe 10 or so the specialists. But once they join PDIS, they can also choose to work on any project. And so they all then evolve to become also facilitators, also public speakers, also, you know, teachers and things like that. And so our rule is that um, the number of specialists must never exceed the number of public servants. Mm. OK, so that means that balance is matter. Mm. Okay. That's right. So, so it remains a public sector innovation initiative. It will not suddenly become what we call a kind of external plug-in to the mm -hmm. governance system. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, do you have any kind of like a meaningful project for you and you done by the PDIS? Yes. So, yeah. um, I mean, we have so many. I don't even know how to. <laughs> But one, one pretty famous case is that two years ago, uh, our text filing system stopped mm -hmm. working on Mac and Linux computers because it was written using Java applet, which mm -hmm. is a technology developed by Sun Microsystem, but then get purchased by the Oracle Corporation, which decided mm -hmm. to stop, uh, deprecate, to, to mm -hmm. remove it from use uh, two years ago. Mm -hmm. So suddenly, everybody not using a Windows cannot file their tax mm -hmm. easily anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and so, unfortunately, uh, on May the 1st, two years ago, um, the Minister of Finance... Uh, Hello. Uh, internet disconnected. Mm. 선생님 지금 녹화 중이시죠? 어, 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 네. 어. 끊긴 것 같은데 어떡하지? 그러게. 어떡하지? 아, uh, uh, you back. <웃음> can you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Welcome back. Okay, good. So, yeah. So, as I was saying, uh, around um Two years ago, um, there was a problem uh, with filing taxes outside Windows system. But unfortunately, the frontline support staff said, okay, so you can just borrow somebody's Windows computer. And, and that really angered people. Yeah. Um, and so they started a e petition, and the petition was named literally, the tax filing experience is explosively awful. Mm -hmm. uh, so it gets support very quickly. Um, mm -hmm. And so instead of saying, you know, defending our policy, we just mm -hmm. say everybody who complain about our tax filing gets invited in a couple of weeks to the Ministry of Finance by our participation officer to co-create and co-design our mm -hmm. tax filing experience. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about IT, it's about the whole experience of tax filing. How can we make it um, better for everyone? Mm -hmm. And so uh, before we posted that invitation, 80% of population online on our participation platform was calling for the resign of the Minister of Finance uh, or using the vendor for corruption or uh -huh. things like that. But yeah. once we did the invitation, 80% began to say, oh, I have a positive contribution. And then people started to really work in together and we run four co-creation workshops that collectively builds the new tax calling experience at negative budget because uh, using cloud services, elastic services, suggested mm -hmm. by the participants, we save a lot of money and use that, a fraction of that, to run the workshops. So it ran out as a pilot to Mac and Linux users last year to approval rating of 96%. But 
this year, we roll it out to even Windows users, so they don't have to borrow a Mac anymore. Uh, and the approval rate is 98%. And this is not because the design is great. It is because thousands of people feel that they have a say. Their idea is incorporated mm -hmm. in the design of text filing. So after that pilot case, we then apply it to our universal healthcare. How do we make mobile computing uh, part of it? The National Palace Museum, and many, many other public services then are developed in this methodology. And we did a uh, what we call government digital service guidelines along with our National Development Council to transfer the knowledge to even the municipal governments and townships. Mm -hmm. That's quite interesting. I mean, I think you could jump in the mic, yeah? Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you in, uh, explained before, I mean, there are lots of uh, civilian experts working with uh, you and the, your colleagues in the other project and where they work together. And how do they cooperate? Yes. Yeah. So um, the idea, there are two ideas. Mm -hmm. One idea, and they are very important, or everything else is detailed. The first one is that the government need to trust people. Yeah. And not expect people to trust the government. That's mm -hmm. the first principle. The second is that we must bring IT to where people already are instead of bringing people to information technology. Mm -hmm. So those two are the key ideas of digital transformation. Mm -hmm. By making the conversation under Creative Commons, even before making a decision. Mm -hmm. Everybody learns the why of policy making, not just the what of policies made. By making the national budget visualizable and publicly commentable to the joint platform, everybody learns how their tax is being spent and can laser focus on the one that they care the most, like long-term health care and so on, and social housing. And by making all the regulations no exception, up for two months of online public debate. People anticipate what is going to change and can even call a stop if the regulation doesn't fit people's needs. So all these three combined together makes the people feel that they are trusted by the government, but the government expects nothing in return. So this is the first in principle. The second principle with civilian experts is that they already have their gatherings. They already mm -hmm. have communities. Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned on Wednesday, we offer our venue, the Social Innovation Lab, for free for them to host their events. And that is how we can then spend time dining with them. Here, yeah. we open until midnight, until 11 p.m. We have a chef. Uh, we have very good cuisine. Uh, we have various different social innovation groups that just hosts here. And because of that, they are much more willing to share new ideas because if you share new ideas in a formal setting, nobody wants to listen. But if you just share it with excellent food, next week you will return, even if you don't remember a thing they said, uh, because the food is good, right? <laughs> and, and open until midnight, so you have plenty of time to mingle. What I'm getting at is that we're bringing the IT to the civilian expert to amplify their voices. We're not mm. asking them to come all the way to our meetings to give a 10 minute speech. We are joining them in their local habitat, so to speak, but using IT technology, including telepresence, te video conference, 360 live stream to amplify their voices to the world mm. corresponding to the sustainable development goals. So that is our way to work with civilian experts always in their space providing them with space and providing them with trust instead of asking them to come to the government. Yeah, and the, the, like you explained before, for the public servant, uh, promote might be the good motivation to participate. <laughs> <laughs> but for the civilian expert, might be the good food. And also, what could be the other, mo what, what, what do you think that what motivation make them participate the most? The main motivation is that they no longer feel alone. Uh -huh. it, it, it's Some the solidarity. Listen. Solidarity. Uh -huh. Because before people may be, you know, alone in their community. 
caring so much about one small thing, mm -hmm. right? Maybe the petitioner that raised the gradual banning of plastic straw, who was only 16 year, year old at the time, a, mm -hmm. a senior high school student, she may be the only one in her class caring about carbon reduction and the plastic waste in the sea. But using e petition, she can uh -huh. find 5,000 people who think exactly, care Same. exactly mm -hmm. like her and mm -hmm. form a community. And the mm -hmm. best thing is that she then learns that people who make those plastic uh, utensils, mm -hmm. they are not um, just for profit. Mm -hmm. They were also social enterprises 20 years or 30 years before. Because at that time in Taiwan, there's a lot of hepatitis B. Uh, the, the virus was a serious threat to yeah. the Taiwanese health. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they started their company making the plastic um, utensils because they want to prevent hepatitis B from spreading. They joined this industry for a social purpose. Mm -hmm. But now hepatitis B is essentially gone. It's very mm -hmm. easily cured. Mm -hmm. So they're also looking at new social purposes. Mm -hmm. And so the 16 year old feel that, oh, then we can use plastic straws, but reshape them from the sugar cane waste mm -hmm. to do a zero, actually negative carbon uh, mm -hmm. production line. And they, she would not feel that, oh, it's the large businesses against me. Actually, the business owners are socially minded. They just don't have the ingredients. And mm -hmm. that's something we can co-create. So solidarity mm -hmm. across sectors is the main motivation for the civilian experts to enter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure Jennifer, Jennifer oh. experienced the same. Yeah, same. Jay, Jennifer has the same experience with that. Feel like a lonely, and <laughs> because she is the first one, first member who opened the creative commons. So, <laughs> all right. Can see Tom German. Yeah, and also, yeah, and also, is there any some successful cases you wanted to introduce? They're conducted by the PU, PO? Yes. So um, as I mentioned, e-petition is one source. Yeah. So mm -hmm. tax filing system, uh, plastic straw, all these are yeah. e-petition. But there also are some cases brought by the PO themselves. Mm -mm. For example, um, I don't know how much of a culture of uh, wooden seal mm -hmm. uh, on a physical paper is important to your culture, uh, but uh, it is important in the Japanese culture. Uh, and also to a lesser extent in the Taiwanese culture as well. Many people feel if they have a piece of paper with a ink of a mm -hmm. wooden seal on it, it means a lot to them uh, mm -hmm. psychologically. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the PO of the National Palace Museum, uh, which you may have heard is a very large museum in Taiwan, um, and they are also a cabinet member. So when I say 32 uh, ministries, the National Palace Museum is one of the cabinet meeting members. Mm -hmm. So the NPM faces a, a dilemma. The young people want to use QR code, want to use NFC, want to use their phone to mm -hmm. quickly enter the museum mm -hmm. and to navigate the museum. They don't want to wait in the queue, right? Yeah. But the elderly people, they want a physical stamp, a physical <laughs> ticket, as something, a memoir that they can bring back to, to their children. But they also don't like the long queue. The elderly mm -hmm. people really don't like to wait for very long, right? Yeah. So they try to introduce kiosk, but they are not very friendly. And frankly speaking, it's impossible to design a kiosk that's equally friendly to a 70-year-old mm -hmm. and a 16-year-old. Mm -hmm. It's just impossible, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, the PO from the NPM brought this idea to us and then we run a collaboration meeting with all the stakeholders, people who run tourist agencies, people who sell tickets online, people who specialize in printing uh, and, and things like that. And we figure out a solution together. And the solution is very simple, actually, if you think about it. The solution is you can have a maybe a line chatbot, maybe any ways for the elderly people to get the entry ticket when they uh, wait in the queue, they don't have to wait. They just to beep their phone to the sensor and they walk in. Mm -hmm. But once they walk in using the same uh, mobile phone, 
or, or their watch, they can claim a receipt that's、uh, more beautiful and more well printed and has a seal ink on it that they can take home as a receipt of using that mobile entering experience. So there's no queue anymore because the collection of receipt is after the queue, and they can spend a lot of time spending. More time、uh, with the、uh, art and the creativity in the museum, rather than spending time waiting in the queue. And they still have a receipt, actually maybe printed with gold,、uh, that they can keep and share with their family.、Mm -hmm. Yeah,、uh, in Korea we, because Korea we has a, we also have a very active online activity. People wants to speak up their opinion about the political issue or also the political conflict, but they are more tend to like a not like a choose their side and then argue, not like a compromising or exchange their opinion and wanna want to discuss about some issue. So how is in Taiwan the same? Like a people tend to like a argue, not like a exchange opinion. Well, I think argue is is just fine.、Uh, I, I don't have <laughs> yeah. against arguing,、um, but you have to argue in a structured way. Yeah. First, you need to argue about the facts. That's why in Taiwan, when we say open data,、mm -hmm. we never mean open government data only. We mean open data from citizen science, open data from the private sector, open data from the academia, and finally, open data from the public sector. Mm -hmm. So we use distributed ledgers, blockchains, to make sure we can hold each other accountable. That we don't、uh, have the、um, capability to change each other's data, and then we put them into a top twenty, I think,、uh, supercomputer, the National Computing Center of High Computing,、uh, mm -hmm. high-speed computing, and then let people upload code to calculate on the same data to make predictions and so on. So、mm -hmm. the data argument. Fact argument is always the first step. We do that before we do anything else, and after we have a common data set,、uh, for example, around the civil IoT, which I just shared the、uh, website address here,、mm -hmm. we have then a common data set about、uh, the air quality, water quality, disaster, and、uh, other earthquake prevention, and so on. And based on that, we can talk about feelings. The same data you can feel.、Um, Pretty good, pretty fine. And another person may feel that we have room to improve. Another person may be downright angry. There is no right or wrong about feelings, as long as they are about the same data, the same fact. Too much time, the online consultation develop into an argument because I feel happy about something. You feel angry about something else, but we confuse those two facts. With each other, and so we seem to be arguing, but we're not really arguing because our reality is different.、Mm -hmm. But once we confirm the base reality, then、mm -hmm. people can share their feelings freely, and there is no right or wrong.、Mm -hmm. And then we use AI to make sure that people see each other's feelings. Actually, people have much more in common than they have in difference. The social and institutional media will amplify the difference because that's. Attracts、uh, attention and sell advertisement, but actually, mostly people feel the same around the same things at the same time. Those are called common sense or common understanding. And then, after we discover the common understanding, after three weeks or so, we move to the third stage. After the fact and the feeling, we move to idea. So this time, we can ideate based on the common understanding in design thinking. This is called a common how might we. Question. So then we enter the second diamond and we ideate about the ways to deliver on the common feelings. The best idea are the one that take care of the most people's feelings. And finally, the last part of the double diamond is to ratify those people's idea into a new tax filing system, into a new healthcare system, into a new system that does what people have wanted all along. They just didn't know everybody else also wanted. Because they were busy getting distracted on a couple of things that are ideological, so that's the entire method called the focus conversation method.、Mm -mm. The thing. Yeah. How about the? I mean, the people they actually follow that 
procedure. I mean, yeah, because people... they, are, they are technically different oh, events. Right. Okay. So, so in this event, you're only allowed to talk about facts. Mm -hmm. Everything else is kept on the record, but they're not mm -hmm. even, uh, you know, informed the next stage. Mm -hmm. And on the next stage, we only ask about feelings mm -hmm. and things like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, now this is more about the personal perspective. And then as, uh, as you distill minister, what is your future plan? Because you have done a lot of things so far. And also, I'm just curious that is there any your future plan that you want to do as a distant minister? Well, this is more an honorary title, actually. Yeah. Uh, my, my three working condition, as I shared, uh, first, I can work anywhere, right? Location independence. Second, I don't give order to my colleagues. I don't take orders from my colleagues, voluntary mm -hmm. association. And finally, radical transparency. Everything, including this conversation, every meeting I chair, even internally, is made completely publicly under Creative Commons. Mm. And because of those three principles, traditional minister or not, I can do exactly the same work. Actually, I did that since the end of 2014 to um, 2015, uh, all the way to early 2016. I wasn't having any position at the time. I'm, I'm untitled. I'm advisor to a horizontal minister at most. But still, using that civilian capacity, using exactly the same principles, I facilitated exactly the same conversations. Mm -hmm. So with this title or not, anyone adopting the three principles can start what I call a conservative anarchist um, intervention to their policy that focus not on against the government or support the government, but on transforming the government. So that's what I've been doing all along, digital minister or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, so far, what was your biggest challenges you done yeah. with this kind of ex experiment? Yes. So uh, there's three preconditions for my three conditions to work, right? First, we in Taiwan have broadband as human right. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't have broadband as human right, location independence doesn't mean much, right? If I go to the top of the Jade Mountain, uh, almost 4,000 meters high, and there's no broadband there, I, I cannot really work there, right? <laughs> but, but, but now they, they have 10 megabits per second, even on the top of the Yushan Mountain. If I go to the Pacific island of Dongsha, and there's no 10 megabits per second, I cannot talk about the coral reef there. But then they have broadband there. So anywhere in Taiwan, 98% or more, the rural indigenous places, they have 10 megabits per second. And if they don't, it's my fault that you can talk to me. And so that is the one of the precondition. And that was a challenge, but now we've tackled that challenge. The mm -hmm. second challenge uh, around voluntary association is that we have, must have a strong social sector, not uh, quote unquote non profit organization, not quote unquote non-government entities, not quote unquote charities, not quote unquote civic hackers, but a social sector that includes everyone and see it in themselves, their purpose to innovate for the society with the society before the government think about those issues. So that is the second challenge. But fortunately, we are seeing a lot of solidarity around Taiwan so that even universities now join the social innovation sector, the social um, sector. So that's the second challenge we've also overcame in the past couple of years. The third challenge, and that still remains, is that there are still people who re re reminisce about authoritarianism, who still thinks that it is more efficient somehow to have a, a ruler that is wise and can determine everything for everyone. And we cannot really blame them because I was born in the martial law era. I can still remember how the martial law works and it instills a certain kind of mentality to people that somehow prefer authority to make decisions mm -hmm. rather than deliberation. Mm -hmm. And this we cannot really solve with technology. Yeah. This we can only solve by talking more to the elderly people and mm -hmm. in participating more uh, mm -hmm. in the local community decisions. So yeah. this will take time. But from experience of the third wave of democratization, this may not be an issue at all 10 years from now. Oh, 
Wow. Oke. Okay. Uh, how do you see the? Do you think the IT technology can be used to create create a inclusive society? How based on your experience and in your thought? So never start with technology. Mm -hmm. so that's okay. My yeah. Uh, so using actually the Creative Commons founders, Lawrence Lessig. Uh, so he has this theory called the pathetic dot or the new Chicago school mm -hmm. that you, you might be already very familiar with, right? So um, there is this uh, innovation in the middle mm -hmm. and the innovation is informed by IT technology architecture mm. uh, on the top. It's also informed by the market forces, market policies from the right. And it's also informed by the law, the legal code from the bottom. And it's also informed by the social norm, the social expectation from the left. So the norm, architecture, market, and the code of law forms a kind of square mm -hmm. that collaboratively determine the innovation and how it happens. In the authoritarian society, the code of law decides how the market should function, which then decide what technology to develop, mm -hmm. which then decide how the society must adapt. So this way of working make the citizen very transparent to the state. Mm -hmm. And we can see it in our nearby jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. I will not name names. But in democratic states, we're doing it the other way around, right? We're saying that uh, the law should be in service of the people. The people should deploy technology however they want. Based on their deployment pattern, the market should satisfy their requirements and if the market step out of boundary the law should regulate the market so that's the other direction of the new chicago theory mm -mm. And, and now we're saying this is not enough because it still starts from the public sector we should move the starting point from the code of law to the social norm the social sector should take the initiative of outlining what is to be expected by technology and so this is the, what we call a norm first approach where the social sector design the norms and the IT sector implement the norms. Mm -hmm. And in UN uh, high level uh, conversation, this is called co-governance or co-gov or digital interdependence. There's many different names, collaborative governance and so on. But the only commonality is that the social sector design the norm and then the IT sector implement the norm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree with you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do you see the role of a civil, I mean, servant in the future? I mean, public servant in the future, like mm -hmm. in 10 years? Mm -hmm. Do yes. they look like the same? Or someone say that they will be the same in 10 years, in 100 years. And someone tell, no, they will be they will be changed, their role will change. So how mm -hmm. do you see? Mm -hmm. Yes, so um, there are roughly speaking um, three different things that a civil servant must answer to, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the one is a certainty, right? If you have no running water or no broadband, mm -hmm. the civil service need to answer for it. This is like very basic, this yeah. is the, the requirement of certainty. The second is a requirement of justice or equality, uh, meaning that people should have equal opportunities. People who abuse the commons should be um, contributing back to the commons in an equal fashion. The judicial branch, for example, but also administration, take care to ensure social justice uh, on the, this regard. That is also a service to the public. And finally, they must also answer in a democratic state to the will of the people, which actually may not be efficient and maybe uncertain and actually may be totally counterproductive for equality. They may be actually very biased and tribalist and populist and still the public service need to answer to that democratic mm -mm. will because we're a democratic state. So yeah. th those two values, that of certainty, justice and democratic will, they're not reinforcing each other all the time, right? Sometimes they, they fight each other. Sometimes sometime it's impossible to reconcile each other. Um, and so I think the role of civil service will change because 
the democratic will traditionally are encountered by representatives, by uh, MPs, by ministers, by the uh, leader of organizations that represents the people's will. But I think that will change. In Taiwan, one year we vote for the president, mm -hmm. another year we vote for referenda, another year we vote for the mayors, and another year we vote for the referenda. So there's one year for representational democracy, but also another year for direct deliberative democracy. And so those two track coexist in Taiwan's governance system. And I think we will in 10 years see much more people taking direct action and representing themselves instead of using a representative to speak mm -hmm. for them. They will mm -hmm. want people who uh, let them speak, not people who speak for them. So that is one part gone from the public service <laughs> 10 years uh, later. We don't need a digital minister to organize the digital transformation anymore. Maybe we will at that time have an analog minister instead because mm -hmm. everything is digital already. So mm -hmm. that's, that's one prediction. And another prediction is the one about the efficiency or the certainty. As many of you already know, with sufficient training data, machine learning can automate a lot of the certainty work that the public service does by hand at the moment. It is in a long trend of automation that a civil service now um, can save their time massively by delegating to automation the yeah. trivial work. Trivial doesn't mean that it's not important. It may be very important, like listening to a water pipe and hear it's leaking or it's not leaking. But it is not something that a human is best equipped to do. The human is best equipped to find creative solution if there is a water leak. But the human is actually pretty bad compared to machines to detect whether something is leaking or not. So the certainty part, uh, in my sense, will be replaced and augmented by what I call assistive intelligence or AI, mm -hmm. meaning mm -hmm. that they're always at an assistive role, not a creative role to mm -hmm. human beings. So mm -hmm. that take care of the certainty part. Mm -hmm. So if the uh, assistive intelligence take care of the certainty part and the collective intelligence take care of the democratic will, then the public service will concentrate on creating spaces to ensure social justice. That is to say, to find common values despite mm -hmm. the different social economic positions of their community members. And that, that co-discovery of justice, of setting the norm, I think that requires human wisdom and that will not go away. Wow, <laughs> that was quite great perspective for the, yeah, for the future. Okay, the last questions. Uh, no, uh, I uh, no. have a question. Yeah, I have a question. So, yes. uh, I, I saw the interview. So, uh, uh, Taiwan's 모든 사람들의 생각을 다 담고 싶다. 이런 답변을 한게 있어 인터뷰에서. 그래서 그러니까 참여하는 사람들의 의견들은 어, 참여하는 촌들에 의해서 모을 수 있는데 참여하지 않는 수많은 많은 사람들의 생각과 그들의 어, 생각을 어떤 식으로 담을 수 있을지 그런 거에 대한 고민. 아, uh, yeah, Jennifer watched some interview video of you that day you you tell you were telling that you want to put everyone every Taiwanese opinions and thought on the system I mean the put on the PDIS or PO so but you know it's a little bit hard because the uh, it's actually we can reach to the people's opinion and thought someone who using the platform so Someone who is not using the platform, how do you uh, approach to them? How, how, what is your strategy, strategy to meet them? I mean, they yeah, might... As I, as I said, yeah. I come to them. I, I don't ask them to, to come to our platform. So, so every other Tuesday, Tuesday. I, I just visit a indigenous tribe or a rural area and, and so on. And mm -hmm. so um, last time we visited 
um, uh, as proposed by one of our youth counselor in the national administration, uh, a place where they farm clams, but using a very sustainable kind of uh, farming um, mm -hmm. that coexists with solar panels, renewable energy, and use natural sea waves to regulate the salinity of the clam uh, pond, and that coexists with a very good uh, birds and other ecosystem. And this is great because it doesn't draw water, uh, clean water from the underground, and so it doesn't uh, endanger uh, the biosystem uh, when you think about seven generations in the future. So if I ask them to come to Taipei to give a presentation, I will only understand maybe 5% of what this is all about, right? Mm -hmm. But because I actually went down and, and you know, picked the clams mm -hmm. uh, and, and participated in the farming process. Um, and we had a conversation with all the local social entrepreneurs, both young and old generations. We actually can then see what our national policies have succeeded and where our national policy have failed. And this is very important because they tell their story, not just to me personally, but for all the different ministries, people telecommunicating through video conference. And we figure our solution right there. In older public service systems, this is impossible because first, you don't have direct access across ministries, mm -hmm. right? You only have access vertically. And if things go right, if you find a good solution, it's always your minister that get the credit. And if your plan doesn't work, your minister can always blame you as a public servant not implementing things well. So in that environment, there's very little uh, incentive for a mid-level career public servant to truly innovate, to forge connection across ministries and across sectors. But because of radical transparency and location, independence and voluntary association, they can now say what's on their mind, even pseudonymously using the online platform. So it's the public servants using the platform, but the local people for them, it's just a town hall meeting. It's just bringing me to, to fish some clams. Mm -hmm. It's just sharing their opinions in the places they already, like a local cafe, that they are already chatting to share their opinions and complaining about the government. For them, this is something that they are already do all the time, right? And so because of that, we amplify their voices. And if the career public servant find a solution right away, then they get the credit because of radical transparency. And, oh. if it does, and if it doesn't work, it's always my fault because I'm the chair of the meeting. And, you know, they are in Taipei or Kaohsiung or other municipalities. You cannot really punch across the screen, right? You cannot harm those public servants, but I'm in the locality. So basically I absorb all the risk, but they, the public service, get all the credit. And in mm -hmm. this system, it's then becoming much more possible for the people to not only feel listened to, but mm -hmm. also listen to each other as well and find that they actually share common values. It's just the bandwidth of the state was too low and the bandwidth of the society is much broader. Okay. <laughs> I have another question. So, yeah, youth council, uh, your, your, your law is uh, youth council, right? Uh, can, can you ask in uh, Korean and maybe we... Uh, youth, youth council. Youth council, yes. Yes. yes, that's a administration level and uh, chaired by the prime minister, by the premier. Uh, she wants to know what's the role of the youth council. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. that's, that's a great question. So, and this is a new uh, invention as well. So as new mm -hmm. as my uh, digital minister, so only three years. So the... Um, Executive UN Council is different uh, from every other youth council because those are the reverse mentors of ministers. Ah, uh, um, reverse mentor. Uh -huh. So, for example, I was the reverse mentor back in 2015 of Minister Jacqueline Tsai. A reverse mentor is like an understudy, right? An understudy is someone who, who works with you to learn your daily job 
and someday may be able to do the same job. That's a understudy, right? But a reverse mentor is a understudy that also has something to teach. So as an understudy, they may be young, they may be 30 years old, 20 mm -hmm. years old, but their ministers think mm -hmm. they can help the minister to show mm -hmm. the direction of the future. So in a sense, they are also mentoring their minister, even mm -hmm. if their minister consider them also understudy. So this is a what we call reverse mentorship, because mm -hmm. usually the old mentor the young, but in this case, the young mentors the old. So each ministry can find such a reverse mentor mm -hmm. and together they form the National uh, Youth Council. Mm -hmm. So each one is considered a leader by the minister that recommends them in mm -hmm. their ministry's business. And so it's very broad. They talk not about only young people at all. They talk about sustainable development goals. They talk about indigenous rights. They talk about um, ecological farming. They talk about everything like how to revitalize entire regions, not only one uh, old house or two. They talk about how art can revitalize education system. So there is no limit to what they can discuss. And what they propose is decided by the premier to turn into national policy uh, by every youth council meeting very quickly. And so this is a much more binding process than a pure advisory position. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. The last one. The I mean someday <laughs> someday the town will come to you. I mean the after this after the digital minister. What is your future plan? Do you have any plan for the after? The district minister. Well, I'm I'm always um, a minister uh, for digital transformation, right? I've okay. been doing that for well at least since my first startup. That's in '95, so '95, uh -huh. so a very long time now. Mm -mm. Um, and so, uh, minister has two meanings, right? One mm -hmm. is the government minister, yeah. the uppercase M, mm -hmm. and one is the evangelical minister. Mm -mm. Uh, with a lowercase m, so like spreading the good news uh, and, and a spreader of good news um, of how the digital can turn competition, which is a uh, limited resource in a zero sum game into abundance, which is reinforcement into each other, into a collective uh, sustainable goal. That transformation from scarcity to abundance exactly actually as the mission of Creative Commons is what I have been preaching uh, as a minister um, for first the free software movement and then the open source movement and then the open access movement and then the open hardware, open data, and open government movement and now the intellectual commons movement and many other movement as well. And all these movements are just individual symptoms of something that's larger that's we think beyond scarcity. And so in that sense, I will remain being a minister with a lowercase m. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in this position, uh, whether or not I'm a uh, uppercase digital minister. So I will <laughs> show you my name card. So <laughs> this, this name card, um, if you can see it, says digital minister, but in lowercase. Yeah. And it doesn't say actually which country I'm working for. Mm -hmm. So it only said Taiwan can help. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So what this signifies is that I'm not working for the Taiwan government. I'm working with the Taiwan government. And, and that is the critical difference between an uppercase minister mm -hmm. and a lowercase minister. And I consider myself always a lowercase minister, whether it's uppercase or not. Yeah. OK, uh, this is I personally curious that what makes you attract to the open. Mm. I mean, since you're very young, you are very, yeah, do yes. lots of things with the open things. Yes. So uh, my first encounter with the open access community is with the archive community mm -hmm. at ARXIV. 
I think Cornell University uh, maintains it. And even today, actually, my papers are published under Creative Commons in the Social Archive. So I encountered the archive community when I was 14 years old. That was 1995. And I see people just posting papers even before they publish to the journal. Uh, I was just a junior high school student. I don't have the money to pay for the academic journals, but I get to read those research even before they make to the journals. And when I write the collaborators about cognitive science, artificial intelligence, computational linguistics, they treat me like a fellow researcher. They mm -hmm. don't know I'm just 14 years old. We're just solving problems together mm -hmm. in an academic community. And without a open platform, without a digital platform, this is impossible. I will have to take maybe a, a airplane to visit their lab and work maybe 15 years to become their postdoc before we can collaborate like this. But because of the World Web and the open access community back then, we were able to start collaborating, even I'm just at 14 years old, who speaks very little English. Mm -hmm. So this is how my education began. And mm -hmm. I, I sent this uh, material of my email correspondence to the principal, the head of my junior high school. And she, after considering it for a couple of minutes, said, OK, tomorrow you don't go to school anymore. You just work with the scholars. And I will cover for you, because at the time it's mandatory education. So if I don't go to the school, my parents will be fined. There, there would be a penalty. And so my, my principal, the head of the school, says, no, it's OK. I will just fake the record to the Ministry of Education so you can pursue your education with the wide web community, uh, which she thinks is a, the future. So I have very optimistic prospects about the innovation capacity of the public sector, of the career public servants, because of my encounter with my head of the school uh, when I was 14 years old. Wow, uh, that's the, how your journey started. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm quite impressed that you mentioned that you are always digital minister and you are always will be. Yeah, okay. 혹시 현수진이 궁금하신 거? Do you have any plan to come in Seoul? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I did visit Seoul actually, um, but that was uh, I think for a cybersecurity conference. Uh, uh, and and um, I'm very I'm more than happy actually to to come to Seoul. Uh, and yeah. I believe actually our open government uh, partnership uh, national action plan, uh, yeah. which uh, because of political reasons is now just called the open government national action plan. Uh, we dropped uh -huh. the P um, yeah. from it, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, it is very kindly uh, supported uh, by the Korea government, um, mm -hmm. the, the OGP liaison. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And we did have a regional meeting uh, with mm -hmm. pretty much all my deputies um, came to uh, Seoul to learn from the OGP process and the IRM process. So um, I think we will kick off our uh, national action plan really quickly, maybe a month from now. Uh, mm -hmm. And then starting next January, we will begin the co-creation process with the social sector. Mm -hmm. And so at a time, if any of your OGP community, I'm sure Creative Commons Korea is part of the, your open government community, um, is interested. We're very happy yeah. to do bilateral or minilateral gatherings uh, uh -huh. in South Korea, and I'd love to come. Uh, OK, because I want to meet real, real space. <laughs> yes, of course. And and I mean, we're we're very uh, close to each other anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So. so <laughs> Um, I think last time the Gov Zero movement, the social mm -hmm. sector, organized a hackathon in Okinawa. Yeah. In Okinawa. Yeah, I heard this. Yeah, heard so it. so so everybody, you know, fly the same distance, uh -huh. to, uh, uh, and have a hackathon together. I'm sure uh -huh. that we can repeat that experience too, uh, if you're interested in co-organizing. Uh, okay. <laughs> 그러면 이제 끝 할까요? 아니면 Okay, thank you for your time. You must be really, really busy, but you, yeah, thank you for your time and then thank you for your all the movement and it was quite inspiring. Yeah. Okay, thank you. 
Thank yeah. you for the great questions. Uh, yeah. and, and thank you for your contribution to the Commons. I mean, we get to publish this under Creative Commons attribution right away. <laughs> this, is, this, this very seldom happens. I usually have to convince my interviewer of the importance of Creative Commons, but uh, you know, I'm preaching to the choir here. <laughs> I'm really happy about that. Thank you for contributing to the comments. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Yeah. All right. Bye. Hope bye. to see you meet again sometime. Yes. Yeah, yes. okay. Bye bye.